Hope you all had a great Labor Day uh, last weekend. We had, ours was uh, relaxing, if not fun. No, it was fun, if not relaxing. That's the way I should have said that. It was fun because we had food, all kinds of food, homemade ice cream and things like that. We had family and we had friends, but it was also good because of an accident that we experienced on Labor Day. You heard me right. We had a good Labor Day because of an accident. Now some of you are sitting back and you're saying, well, wait a second, How, what, is, what is good about an accident? Well, first let me tell you a lot about what happened and then I'll tell you what was good. Um, around, we have a, a, a cabin over on Lake Ponderosa over in central Iowa and around that, that lake there are trails for ATV uh, tra ATV um, trails. And all weekend long, our family and friends were taking rides on ATVs around these trails. And among those that were taking rides was my great nephew, Will, my, my niece Michelle's son, Will. He's about 10 or 11, I think. It was on his ride that um, they, the ATV rolled over. Now, they had their seatbelts on. And the roll bars on the ATV did exactly what they were supposed to do. But um, as they were rolling over, Will, naturally, I think, reached down to grab the seat. And as he did, and the, and the ATV rolled, it crushed his little fingers. It crushed his fingers, all of them, um, which is not good. Uh, he had surgery this past week, um, and he's probably got months of... Um, of uh, therapy just to get dexterity back in his hand because of it. Now, that is not good, as I said. Well, let me tell you something. When everything settled down, our first inclination is, I bet yours would be too, our first inclination was to think about everything that had went wrong that day. But it wasn't long before we started thinking about the things that had went right that day. Just last weekend alone, I heard two stories just on the news of, of people who were killed in ATV accidents. Did you hear those stories? And when we started thinking about all the things that could have happened, we found ourselves being thankful and praising God for what did happen. You see what I mean? There is good that can be found even in an accident. Now, the thing I want you to hear about that story is that in the midst of it, we had a choice. We could have continued to obsess over everything that had went wrong, but instead what we found ourselves doing, and it was almost intuitive, maybe it was spirit-led, I hope it was, instead of focusing on that which went wrong, we focused on that which was right, and we found ourselves being thankful and praising God. And we had a choice. But what I've discovered is, as I've delved into the scripture this week, I've discovered that it's not just a choice that we have as Christians to praise God in the midst of the storms. It's also a calling. Did you know that? As a Christian, it is your calling to praise God in the midst of the storms of life. And I'm going to show you what I mean. If you have your Bibles, I want you to open them up to... Uh, the New Testament book, the last book in the Bible, chapter 15. And as you're opening up your Bibles, maybe you use your phones, that's okay. Um, I'm going to give you a little uh, context so you be better understand what, we're, what God wants to teach us today, okay? So let me give you context as you open up your Bibles. Um, the section of Scripture that we're going to be looking at here in the book of Revelation um, is anything but joyful. Because what, we've, what you'll find is that the section, the several chapters surrounding the passage of Scripture that we're going to focus on in just a moment is um, it's focusing on the great tribulation. It's focusing on the judgment of God. So devastating, according to Revelation chapter 14, so devastating where the judgments of God at one point, blood flowed through the valley of Megiddo up to the, the uh, bridles of the horses. 
for 1,600 furlongs. And if you're interested, that's for 200 miles. Blood flowed. Now, some people would hear that story or read that story in the scriptures and they will say, you know what, that doesn't sound like the God that, that the pastor uh, preaches about most every Sunday morning. Where is the, the gracious and loving God? And not this justice, this just um, God, this judgmental God. Well, listen to me. If I have failed to give you a picture of the full nature of God, I apologize. So listen to me. It is God's nature to be loving, to be gracious and forgiving. But it is also God's nature to be just. And to deny it doesn't make it go away. Now, we find this picture of the Great Tribulation. And um, it's between the tension of God's grace and love and God's judgment that our passage of Scripture is actually found. It's a beautiful, um, if not ironic and seemingly unusual depiction in the midst of all this devastation that is going on. God is just is preparing to pour out the, fi the final vials of His judgment upon the earth and it will complete His judgment. But in the midst of this tension, by the way, you might say, I, I, there's something that I need you to hear there, that, I, that I didn't focus on and I should have. In the midst of the great tribulation, there's at the end of chapter 13, something beautiful is described. Um, God, it says that in the midst of his judgment, God sends out evangelists to the world. People who have been called and set apart, 144,000 of them. People who have been called and set apart to to proclaim hope in the midst of devastation. To proclaim grace and relationship in the midst of judgment. Grace and justice. So it's in the midst of this tension that our passage for today happens. John, the apostle, is is describing a scene that is, that is unfolding in front of him. He describes it as a, a beautiful glassy sea that's, that's just flowing in front of him. And what he's describing is the saints of God, people just like you and me, could be you and me, that are being described. Really what he's describing, though he doesn't use these words, but this is exactly what he's doing, he, he is saying, guys, look! There has assembled the most beautiful heavenly choir the world has ever known. Because the saints of God have gathered together in the midst of the devastation of judgment. The saints of God have gathered together and they begin to sing this song. Now you might say, well, what song is it, Pastor? Well, I can tell you exactly what it is because it's found right there in Revelation chapter 15, verse 3. It says, sing the song of Moses, the servant of God. Sing the song of the Lamb, Jesus. And the song goes like this. I don't know the melody, but I know the words. Great and marvelous are your ways, O God. Just and true are your precepts, great God of the saints. Great and marvelous are your ways, O God. You, O God, are perfect. You are gracious and kind and forgiving, and you are also just. Great and marvelous, marvelous are your ways, O God. Just and true are your precepts. Just and true are your commandments. Your standards. 
your truth. You see, this great heavenly um, choir that has gathered has come to praise God in the midst of the greatest devastation, the great tribulation that the world will ever know. And they have come to praise God in the midst of it. They have come, each of those saints of God that have come to praise God even for His justice, have come to recognize that the, the devastation that has befallen the world, part of that, part of the cause of that is them. Because those saints understand that it's their sin. It is our sin that has brought devastation to the world. And in part, the great tribulation, the cause of it belongs to me and you. But what they were doing in the midst of this tension that I've described to you is even though they recognized their own sin in the midst of it and they say it is it is righteous for you to judge us we deserve any judgment that we that comes our way even though they're saying we know that 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 judgment belongs to us as much as it does to anybody else they were saying thank you god thank you jesus for offering grace and forgiveness and hope even in the midst of the storms of life. Even in the midst of the great tribulation, he's saying, thank you for hope. Any of this starting to resonate? We have a choice. You might say, well, what does all this have to do for us today? Are we in the great tribulation? I don't know, honestly. Some people would say that maybe we're in the birth pangs, but you know what? It doesn't really even matter. Because the fact of the matter is, the experiences that we've been having that seem so unusual and seem so otherworld, what it, it's because it says in Romans 8.22, it says that the very earth groans as in childbirth, even up to this very day. The earth is affected by the sinfulness of humanity. And that's what we're experiencing. Whether this is the great tribulation or not isn't the point. The point is that in the midst of it, of all that's going on, and some of it we have to take responsibility for, in the midst of all that's going on, God's grace and God's love, God's hope is constantly and forever being offered to us. And we have a choice. We can shake our fist at God and say, what is all this? What is this 2020 stuff, God? Or we can say in the midst of it all, in the midst of the storms, I praise you. Most of the world is going, is shaking their fist. And they need to know that there is hope and grace and redemption being offered to them. And who is going to tell them if, it not, if not you? You are the church. If you have accepted Jesus Christ into your heart as Lord and Savior, yes, you can choose to shake your fist, but you have a calling to praise His name, to sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, sing the song of the Lamb in the midst of the storms of life. You have a choice. And you have a calling. This morning as we receive communion together, um, I want you to consider that. I want you to consider the choice and the calling as you deal with the, the storms of life corporately and individually because we all got those two choose wisely because the world is counting on us and so is God.